Hey, Jimbo, you ready for this deal? Turn him out. (laughs) Old stories like long lost friends. Rodeos and late night bends. History before our time. Round pens and pasture rides. Cowboys of the Osage. Howdy, friends and neighbors. Time once again for the Cowboys of the Osage podcast with your host, Jimbo Snively and Cody Garnett. Now let's sing a little bit about it. Cowboys of the Osage, riding once again. Always got some time for a friend. And here they are, the Cowboys of the Osage. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Cowboys of the Osage podcast. Brought to you by the Ben Johnson Cowboy Museum, the Buck and Flamingo Turquoise Shop, and now Saucy Calf, traditional Native American food, all located right here in historic downtown Pahuska, Oklahoma. Hey, it's old Cody over here, and as always, I have my main man with me, Mr. Rodeo Historian himself, songwriter too, heck of a good songwriter, Jimbo Stively. Morning, Jimbo. Who do we have on today? Hey, Cody boy, it's just another great day in the Osage, man. And Cody, you know we've got the big steer open finals coming up in no- November up in Mulvane, Kansas, and We've got, I'd say, kind of the face of steer roping the last year or so with uh, steer roping headquarters with that himself. Steer roping headquarters, Mr. Kenyon Burns, and and Kenyon's a, a national final steer roper himself, and his dad also is a great steer roper, and they come from that great steer roping country, of Levington, New Mexico. Rookie of the year too. Rookie of the year, all that stuff, and uh, and no time at all. We'll talk about, but anyway, Kenyon, welcome to the Cowboys of the Osage podcast. I was telling him about your horse. Riding your horse on the Cheyenne track with a halter on it. Why, when you were cut off a while ago, I, I went oh, through. Oh, gosh, now why would you tell a story like that? I told him not to tell it. You weren't there to defend yourself. I went but he through did the whole anyway. story. I, I told it the way I saw it from, <laughs> from, uh, from afar. We need, we, we need the version of it, uh, firsthand version of the guy sitting on the horse real quick. Sir, no, I got you. I got you. Hey, give me a couple seconds. I'm going to get a stool right quick. I want to make sure that um, <clears throat> that I'm kind of set down so I can make sure I get everything in order and give give it to you in the series of events as to how it happened and make sure that you can paint the picture. Bear with me. I'll be right back. You got it. This is the wildest thing you ever seen, Jimbo. Everybody, every steer roper, everybody in the stands – Everybody working there. Some of the fans there probably thought it's part of the show. (laughs) Trick riding or something. Yeah. Everybody there uh, was paying close attention to what was going on with Kenyon and his horse there on the track. Right. I mean, they were going at a high, (laughs) high, high. I think that that horse may have won some sort of uh, stakes or something. (laughs) Some sort of stakes at a race. He might have could have won the damn Kentucky Derby on that right. horse that day. All right. Well, you know what? We were rolling pretty fast. Yeah, we were <laughs> rolling pretty fast. So let's start with the morning's event. It was the first year that they had team roping in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. I don't know. Cody, I'm sure you were there. Yeah, I was there. I watched it. That's the year that they wrote Mealy Steers there yeah, at that's the uh, right. Cheyenne. You were there. That's right, yeah. And I don't know if you remember, but they roped muleys that first year that they had the team roping. Yes. So anyway, this guy from Southeast Texas wanted to rope with me. And uh, so we entered up, and I think we actually got a time. He, he got a leg, and I had this big old powerful head horse. And I mean, this sucker had a 454 engine for a heart. And 
boy, he could run, but he was strong and just borderline dangerous, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his name was Sunshine, by the way. And so anyway, we wrote, and shoot, we were happy. We just got a time, and we were watching some of the other roping, and I went and got me a Coke and like a breakfast burrito and this and that under the stands. Um, the steer roping was going to be a little bit further down. I think they were going to bulldog in between the team roping and the steer roping for some reason. Or maybe I, we were in a different section. Maybe I was coming back for my second round in the slot. I can't remember the case, but I was going to be tripping a steer like around lunch or something. So around, you know, 10 o'clock, something like that, I go over to get my head horse. I've taken my bridle and everything off. I've hung it on the saddle horn. Uh, I put his halter on him and had him tied up, everything. I had me a team roping bag there, like a real team roper. And so I took that team roping bag and kind of, you know, slung it over the saddle horn. And, and instead of messing with the bridle, and the tie down and everything, I thought, oh, I'll just get on him and just ride him back out to the trailer to get my tripping horse <laughs> with the halter on. As a side note, this horse came off the track. Okay. And this is a great big horse with lots and lots and lots of speed. And he's very, very skittish. Very spookish. What could to go the wrong? Point to where he gets spooked and he'll tear something down <laughs> or tear something up. <laughs> so anyway, so so we start walking. You know the 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 break in the track there where everybody goes. You know goes in and out right there, kind of by those pins. Yeah. So I walked. I walked through there. And I feel like I had someone that was on my right that was just kind of, you know, walking with me. We had said a couple of things. And a couple of friends came by. And I'm, they had all their steer stuff. And um, anyway, this horse, whenever they went by, this guy, he kind of, he was jacking with me a little bit. And he kind of put his rope up like he was going to heal that horse on the way by, but actually didn't. And it scared old Sunshine. So Sunshine just immediately took off in a lope. And I thought, well, I didn't think a whole lot of it. And I thought, well, you know, I'll get him shut down. I'm a cowboy. And so we're going down the straightaway, and he's just going a little faster and a little faster. <laughs> and so I'm double-handed down there on the lead rope, just, you know, really starting to yank <laughs> with everything I've got. And he's not giving any to it. I thought, okay, cool. Now, a short pause. If I would have known then what I know now, I would have pulled the ripcord immediately. <laughs> I would have done the tuck and roll and just ended the ride right there. But I thought, well, when we go into the curve, I'll really suck my hand down there and pull his head back and just basically kind of spin him around and break his stride. Well, when we got to the turn like that, I... I got his head turned around and he was looking at me and I was looking at him, but we weren't doing anything but going faster and faster and faster. <laughs> and so we get around the turn and then he sees where that straightaway starts to head out into the parking lot. And I thought, this is not good at all. This is going to be bad. 
Um, they're going to see me plastered on the nose of a bloomer somewhere. <laughs> so we're headed out into there, man. And I'm just, now you're thinking the worst. Doug Clark comes riding up beside me as fast as he can. And Doug, man, he's hollering at this horse and he's screaming and shooing him. And I, I mean, basically at one point, I think maybe even our knees might have touched that he, he was trying so hard to keep this horse from going out of that straightaway into the parking lot. Well, he got it done. So there was win number one. We're not out into the parking lot. But you're not so we're going either. back down the, the straightaway in front of the big grandstands where the entertainment stage is. And I thought, well, surely he's not going to run through the, through, the, through the entertainment stage. Well, I mean, he's going, it just feel like we just keep going faster and faster. We start to get up to the stage. And he checks a couple of times. And I thought, <laughs> the ride is finally over. Man, that was a tough one. Well, he identified a gap between <laughs> the actual arena fence and the very back of the stage, which, Cody, you know, but was not, I mean, but about three feet wide. And they had a board going over it. At, at mo I mean, maybe at most. And they had this big board <laughs> that they had some uh, they had some electric cables. They were using this board to support some electric cables that were coming from the camera pit over to the stage. And I'm going to tell you what, this camera, I mean, this board was this a really big horse and i felt like that board was probably lined up pretty even with my neck <laughs> or a little bit lower and, even. <laughs> and well you know it could have been yeah it could have been because i know when it finally happened my saddle horn just barely went under <laughs> that four by four it didn't look like you were going to make but, it under from across the way that day. Hey, you know, that's so ironic because it didn't look like I was going to make it under there from my vantage point either, Cody. So anyway, we're headed towards it, and I know he's not going to stop. And I'm thinking, okay, what's my option here? I'm really not wanting to jump off on the fence or that stage or anything. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to have to put my arms up and take it. And then it was going to be a tough take it. Maybe some broken arms, but maybe I would live. Then at the last minute, I thought, to heck with this. I got to try something. And so I did an extreme <laughs> out of this world, left-handed bulldogging move like you've never seen in your life. I saw it. So I go off like the left-hand side, and I've still got the saddle horn, and I get down just as low as I possibly can, and I see that board just kind of braise the top of my hand. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, I've got so much adrenaline going at this point. I'm like, okay, now I want to be back on the animal. So, man, I come back up out of it. Of course, there was a guy that was getting ready for George Strait that night. Uh, I can't remember if he was out there or not. I don't know. I do know there was a guy unloading some guitars out of a suburban. <laughs> and uh, I went by and knocked his side mirror off and about <laughs> scared him half to death. But where everybody watches the flat, you know, they're sitting there with their legs cocked over their saddle horns and, you know, they're not paying attention and everybody's just lined up down there. And there were some of them that, that didn't see me coming. <laughs> 
And there was a guy on the end on a gray horse. He was sitting there and he had his kid that was probably seven, eight years old sitting on the back with him. And um, he never, you know, he never did clue in to me that I was coming. <laughs> so, man, we're getting closer and closer. And then I see Kevin Stewart right there. The old, you know, team roper used to go to the finals a lot. Oh, yeah. Good steer roper, too. He just he just does a huge, uh, what do you call that, a hula hand? Where you swing it backwards? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he does a huge hula hand to try to rope that horse. And then he was just going to try to throttle the horse down. Well, as he's doing this, I'm raising my arms up again for impact. <laughs> I'm thinking, I mean, we're hitting this gray horse. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I forgot about this part. <laughs> I'm hitting the gray horse. So I'm putting my hands up. The hula hand loop comes, and he gets so close. And his intentions were so good. But he actually roped me. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about this, Jimbo. And, and so he roped me. And then when it did, it just sucked my arms down to the side, <laughs> to both my sides. So whenever I made an impact, I was helpless, <laughs> absolutely helpless. And so I just T-boned this poor man with his poor offspring sitting on the back on a peaceful day at Shang in Wyoming watching the slack. And I just T-boned them both. And so I went flying over him and, and his horse. My horse goes down. His gray horse goes down. I'm not too sure there's not a third horse that doesn't go down during all, all this. Because it was a true real-life collision. <laughs> I'll call it what it was. It was a collision, and I looked, had to have looked like a yard dart just being swung out over the top of old Sunshine's head. <laughs> yeah, his arm. And so, bam, I hit, and I hit right on the top of my head uh, out there on the track. And, I mean, it really dazed me. I didn't quite know what was going on, and horses are down. And, you know, whenever they're down, both on the side, they're just, they're clawing and they're kicking. And I was kind of in the middle of all that and trying to get away from it. Well, I finally get stood up and I see this gray horse that I just ran over. He gets up and he's spooked. Well, he's got a coil. He's got a bunch of coils of a rope wrapped around his back leg, and he's about to run off. And I just happened to look down. <laughs> well, it's the coils from Kevin's rope that has come up around my neck at this point. <laughs> and so this sucker's coming. He's coming around, and I thought, I'm about to make another loop. <laughs> around the Cheyenne track being drugged by my neck. Anyway, Brent Lewis comes running out there, and he gets in, he grabs me, he grabs the rope, throws it off of me, and we avoided lap number two. And so um, then, um, you know, man, I am beat up. I've got blood coming out of my head. I don't know what's going on. I, they take me back into the into the EMT underneath the grandstands. And as we're going through there, I don't see anybody. Everybody's all cleared out, and there's nobody under there except Lionel Burns eating breakfast. <laughs> so they take me by there, and he just kind of watches because as we go by, then he comes in there and he says, well, did something happen? <laughs> you can you can understand, Cody, probably what I felt like telling him at that point. But I didn't say a word. 
they asked me who the president was and this and that and i was able to get through some of that so they let me go and boy my my shirt was torn and i was not in that good a shape and then but i still had time to go rope steers and i won second in the round <laughs> perfect and wow. so that was the Cheyenne story that you saw and so many have heard about, and that reminded me about uh, 22 years later, every time I go to Cheyenne. Jimbo, how close was I, my story to his story? Close, pretty close. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. I may have had a couple small details I, wrong. I thought you were probably exaggerating, but you No, weren't. I forgot about the guy roping it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember him running into the horse. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, I don't even know why I forgot about the guy roping him. And uh, holy yeah, moly. Yeah, I got roped. Yeah, sure, got roped, man. Yeah. Yeah, I got roped and just yard darted. Me. <laughs> it's one of the now, wildest things there I've was ever seen. A, there's another part of the story, and I could, I could hear him, and a lot of other people could hear him as well. But uh, my friend Joe Beaver, he was sitting up there with where the family sits during the slack and he stands up and he's yelling and he's yelling and him uh, a word that sounds very similar to to duck mother trucker <laughs> it's, it's a phrase that sounds almost just like it yeah. duck mother trucker duck yeah and uh his wife hit him he said you can't say that up here. He says, that boy needs to hear that word <laughs> right now because he is in danger. It's coming up to that board, right? Uh, yeah, that's when I was coming up to the board, yeah. <laughs> and uh, because he knew that I was just going to try to take it. And uh, he knew that I needed to hear duck. And uh, and I I heard that voice over there. Like I got, I got to try something. I got to try something. Therefore, then came in the famous left-handed bulldogging position. That's a good one. I told you, Jimbo. Yeah, I, I told. Th you I thought that. you had to be exaggerating. No, I wasn't exaggerating. I didn't even have the full story. No, it got wilder. From no, that it part. probably left a few parts out. I would <laughs> suspect. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really quite a show. And I tell you what I really learned after that day is to never, ever, ever get on a horse with a halter. Especially a race horse at the racetrack. <laughs> I never even took that into consideration, too, Jimbo. Boy, you talk about feel like an idiot. But I really thought that I could handle that horse with a halter, and I couldn't. Did you make the legacy finals, Kenyon, that they're having up there? I did not because I'm not old enough. Oh, Cody. okay. Perfect. Well, that's good. Yeah, to thank you. But, but hey, but thank you for asking. I really appreciate that. Well, I figured you had a gold card. I didn't know you had to be a certain age. Well, you know, yes. I think you have to be turning 50 that year. Oh, okay. I just thought you had to have a gold card. I was just mistaken. And so, but, but, Cody Garnett, next year, I will be eligible. <laughs> <laughs> I will be eligible next year. So you're going to be shooting us all the updates from the, from the National Final Steer Rope in the first, is that the first weekend in November this year? It is the first weekend in November, and I'm going to be there and uh, have a little filmer there and everything set up. And we're going to try to update you as much as possible. Perfect. Um, I want, I'm going to try to get some round winner interviews, update you with earnings, have somebody doing all the stats. Um, we're looking at maybe doing some stuff live, you know, as people are being able to watch it on TV. You know, um, or not being, or if they're not able to watch it on TV, they can get on their phone and see some stuff going on live. That's 
that's what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to try to get it as real time as possible. And then at the very end of it, we'll do one big show that would just be a wrap up. Excellent. And, uh, Y'all, yeah. Facebook are, pages. Are y'all going to be able to make it up there? Um, we hadn't really thought about it. To be honest with you, yet <clears throat> the only time I ever talked about it was you the other day, Kenyon. <laughs> no, it, uh, well, that's what you said, man. It'd be, I mean, it'd be an honor, I think, for the national finals if the Cowboys of those age were was at the national finals, steer open, participating. You know, I was at the first national finals. 1959, Clayton, New Mexico? Yeah, I was three years old. No. Cody actually told me that the <laughs> other day. That is... You talk about a guy that has known steer roping literally since the time he could talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sure. And so you had a dad and an uncle roping that year? Grandpa and an uncle. My dad ran the chute. Grandpa and an uncle. Yeah, my dad opened okay. the chute. My dad was there, and he opened the chute gate. So they were all three participating. Okay. <laughs> now, as if, did, did your dad end up like 16th or 17th yeah, or yeah. something? And they told him to go because he said somebody will drop out. Well, he, so we had to take another car and another horse trailer just to take an extra horse out there. And he didn't, nobody dropped out. So they felt bad, and they paid him $200 a day. To open the gate. I <laughs> did they really? Yeah. That's big money. <laughs> to open the chute. Yeah. But he liked froze to death. That is rock. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's a that's an awesome story. I, so, I, I ended up seventeenth or eighteenth one year one and had to go on time. New Mexico. Yeah, I was at the first one. And wow. Went to all the early ones, you know. I, I remember all the ones at Pahuska early and Benita, and then back to Pahuska and all that, McAllister. But, and I guess, didn't they have Pecos a time or two? Yeah, I never went to Pecos. But, uh, yeah, they had yep. Pecos two years, 68 and 70, I think, or 68 and 69. 69 and 70. It was muddy down there, too. Can you believe it, Kenyon? <laughs> Not really. I mean, did did somebody leave the sprinklers running all night, or what happened? I don't know. We got some old pictures of it, and it was muddy booger down there at Pecos at the national finals. I, hey, I've heard that. It, I've had some guys tell me that it was muddy down there, and yes, it is hard to believe. Well, Jimbo, what else you got for Old Kenyon today? Well, we just thank him, but uh, tell him to keep up the good work. You know, on the steer open headquarters, we really appreciate it and appreciate what you're doing. For, for, for steer roping. You know, well, what, Jimbo? And that, you know, that's a two way street. I was, uh, Jimbo, I was telling Cody, um, up there at Cheyenne, you know, we've got big mouths on us. Well, I guess we might as well use them for good and for something that, you know, we both love very much. And that is, uh, steer roping in the Western way of life. And I am more than appreciative of the things that you guys have done because I don't really listen to podcasts or anything, mm -hmm. but I listen to y'all's because y'all have had some of the most interesting guys on there. My favorite one so far is with Jimmy Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was my favorite one so far. And the one with Guy and Gip was good. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, I couldn't believe we could nail Jimmy down for over three minutes at a time to do an hour long. Yeah, I didn't think you could sit, <laughs> sit still that long, did you? Nope, I sure didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. But I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing as well. And the Western way of life is important to the foundation of the United States. Yep. Because it's cowboy, and it's cowboy that believes in God, takes care of his family, and loves the United States of America. And we need a lot more of that in our country and in our society today. Amen. Hey, in fact, you? if the world would be a lot better place if we just had more cowboys. That's right. No joke about that. There really would be. 
Yeah, it really would be. So it's it's actually an honor to be able to talk about something that I know a little bit about and help try to support those principles and those values just like you guys are doing. And and it it truly is an honor for y'all to ask me to be on this podcast with you. And I really, really appreciate it. Hey, Kenyon, being the ambassador steer roper that you are now, the ambassador of steer ropers, we normally ask a guy at the end of one of these. Okay. If you were to name four guys to go on the Mount Rushmore of steer roping, who would they be? Your Mount Rushmore of steer roping. Four names only, though. Well, of course, Guy Allen. Yeah. Uh, Of course, it'd have to be Guy Allen would be, you know, the first one. I think Sean Burchette has to be the second one. Uh, I'm going to stay away from uh, active steer ropers. They got to be retired. Um, Yep. Yep. For your list. So I think Sonny Davis has to go on there. And then there's there's one more. And it's <laughs> hard to do that. Golly. Boy, it is. It's hard just to pick. Four. I'm almost thinking Chuck Webster. I he, like it. Yeah, he's been on a lot of guys. I, I don't know. I mean, but golly, you got McIntyre's and Sanders Lively's and just, <laughs> there's so many. You got Everett Shaw. You got uh, Bob Crosby. Oh, oh. What, uh, yeah, that's true. It's tough. That's true. I know. So, right quick, Jimbo, tell me, look, tell me your family tree right quick. Oh well, my grandfather was Jim Snively Senior, yep. and uh, he was yep. he was a top cab roper back in the late thirties and forties, and then started single steer roping. Was world champion steer roper in nineteen fifty six, and won the first national finals in nineteen fifty nine. And then Joe, That's right. Joe was my uncle, his youngest boy, and uh, he won the average in sixty one and seventy two. Yeah, seventy two. He got beat out for the world by Clark McIntyre in 1961 by 94 dollars. He was just not, no, no kid, 19 years old. Wow, what a story! You got a little more yeah, too than that, story. Jimbo. What's that? How many times did Clark McIntyre win the world? Three. Three. How about shoot? Four. He has a couple more in his family tree that were some of the very top Cowboys in the world before they had a national finals, too. Well, Pat Parker. Yeah, I had Uncle Pat. I have and heard Jason of Pat Nally. Parker. He was, a, he was a good cab roper back in the 40s. Had a little trouble yep. with al- alcohol. and His career was cut short, but uh, he, was a, he was a top cab yeah. roper. Sure was. Didn't he make the centerfold of I've Life magazine? I've heard those magazine? old cowboys will get out there yeah. drinking a little bit. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he drank more than a little bit, but uh, he he, oh. he was also in the centerfold of uh, uh, Life magazine, 1948. Co- 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 Cody's got a copy of it here in the museum, roping the calves okay. at Madison Square Garden, 1948. What at about Madison Jason Square Garden? Do what, Cody? What about Jason Ively? And Jim's older brother, Jay was a, a top cab roper, and Jim told me he had one of the first horses, if not the first horse, to work a rope on his own. You know, if you look at those old cab roping pictures back in the 20s into the 30s, a lot of times the rope was just laying on the ground, and the guy tying the calf, you know. And, and I've noticed and they that. said Jay had one of the first ones, and, and Will Rogers bought him for $2,500, which was a lot of money in 1930-whatever. Mm-hmm. He also won Cheyenne one time in a, an event that I don't even know if they have anymore. Yeah, he. We. I've got a silver cup what at home. What is it? Uh, it was a match. It was. What's that cup say? I match remember. race. Yeah, match race. Cheyenne match race, nineteen thirty-three, I believe, won by Jay Snively. A match race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I've got that silver cup. I need to bring it here to the museum. But uh, I, I, I doubt for very many of so them around. What's the match? What's the match race? I don't know. It's just some kind of a horse race and. Uh, 
Jim always told me that Jay had a horse that could really run, but that's all I ever knew. And then we uh-huh. went, we we bought this cup. It showed up at an auction here in Pahuska, and we ended up buying it. And I don't know where it been, where you know the story on what, where it got away from the family or or everybody, every place it'd been. But we ended up buying it, and now it's at my house. What happened to Jay? Wow. He finally just died. I mean, you know, he, oh, okay. he, he was up there pretty good in years. I didn't know if he died in his prime or what. I didn't no, know. No, 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 no. No, Cody, he just died. Just died. He's got a pretty historic rodeo family. Um, well, that's what it sounds like. I didn't know there was the relation to the Parker guy because I have heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, he's quite the rope. So, right yeah, there. as far as the other one, I guess I am going to say Shook Webster. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't, I mean. He was pretty dominant back then. Pretty darn dominant, yep. So, who, okay, now I'd love to know, what about y'all? <laughs> <laughs> well, you always have to start with, like you said, Guy Allen. I mean, you, know, you, just, you can't deny 18 World Championships. And uh, sure. And then I have to put, of course, I'm old school, but I got to put Shoat and Everett Shaw on there. And then I'm like you, I'm kind of lost on that fourth one. Although I always tell people that Olin Young was the best roper I ever I thought Olin Young was the best roper I ever saw. I just liked the way he roped. He roped them all, put a trip on them, tied them all down, just a perfectionist. Same way in the cab rope. You yeah. know, he's, he's won the average at the National Finals cab roping four times. And the average at the national finals steer roping three times. He's got seven average championships. Hey, let me tell you something. They don't just hand those out to anybody. No. No. So I guess I'll put Olin on there. I've too. heard that about him, that he was an absolute perfectionist and he would he did everything right every time. Yeah, he sure did. He wrote I tell people he roped the way I wanted to rope. My no, number's going to go I, straight ropers, Kenyon. I like J.D. Woods. Uh, I said, I'm just going to go horn ropers, not steer ropers. Okay. I'm going to go J.D. Okay, Yates. Okay, let's hear it. J.D. Yates. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go Bobby Harris. Woo! <sighs> okay. Those last two get hard for me, you know, on my Mount Rushmore's. I'm going to put my dad on there for me, just for my own personal Mount Rushmore. I, I, and I think that you should. I think it's very well merited. It has a lot of merit to it. And uh, <laughs> I'm right there with you guys. I, I can't hardly get a fourth one in on that deal. Um, I've seen so many great ropers through my life. But I tell you what, just roping horns, J.D. Yates and Bobby Harris really uh, impressed me a lot. Still to this so day. I want to. I'm glad that you brought that up because what do they both have in common? They're healers. There you go. And I don't know if you remember when Rich Skelton was roping steers, he roped the crap out of those horns. Yeah, he did. Horn roping. I there. mean, he could crack it on them. And so there's something that goes on with their dynamic, their swing, their delivery. There's something. That really helps that steer rope and loop. Yeah, they that's just, don't just miss. too coincidental. Yeah. Yeah. Too coincidental. And not only do they not miss, hey, they rope them like perfect I'm, every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. Yeah. But I don't know. Steer ropers, I'd go Guy Allen just like you, Sean Burchett. I might even throw Jim Davis on mine. Just that's the era I grew yeah. up in. Those are the guys I grew up watching. And, uh, I know, I know, Jimmy D. That's a that's a hard one to look over. I know. You know, he was just there when I was growing up, and uh, as far he as steer ropers, that fourth one, I'd, it'd be hard for me to do, just like anybody else. I might put Bob Crosby on there just for fun. Sure, just because he's wild. Just because I mean, he's I'm wild. Wild. Like you, you, Cody. Arnold, like, Arnold Feltz is a hard one to look over. Yeah. There's too many uh, of them out there. Yeah, he was uh, one of those guys I watched my whole life, too. And the craziest that, thing about true. Arnold, the older he got, the better he got. It's a quiz. I know. <laughs> he was 50 years old in the know. six go that, rounds of the national finals. Thing. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. How many, 
How many go rounds did he win in a row? Six. Six. Yes. Now, I want to tell you a kind of a, a weird little story. He did it on the horse that I high school team roped on. <laughs> oh, Santa Claus. No kidding. Yep. We called him Ed. And he, he ran in the right lead, and it was a real long right lead, and it was just weird. But I team roped on him and was okay and tripped some steers on him. Nobody really liked him around there. I said, oh, I'll go try him out. <laughs> well, he tried him out all right. And the rest is history. Yeah, never saw him. He didn't look like he was in that right lead with old Arnold very good. He uh, he looked like he was in his left lead and he came back. He came back hard. Too, <laughs> it was amazing the timing that those two had. Arnold would have that slow loop way out there. And as he would cross over, just crack. And like everything happened at the same time. You know, I think the year that Arnold Feltz won the world, um, he got his horse over the rope on his tenth steer, and I don't, I don't know if it was Buddy Lytle flagging or who, but they made him get back on his horse and turn and put slack in your rope. Didn't let him take it off the horn. Oh, really? Didn't cut it. Nothing. And I think that was a no. A big, just that's, big, good horse that's hardcore flagging, John man. Henry, I heard. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. John Henry was that horse's name, right? I think so. Yeah, maybe a big black horse. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. You know, I just heard the story. I don't remember seeing it or anything. So. Yeah. I was out playing underneath the grandstand well, it, somewhere. Well, it was in 1981. So. Okay. That's getting back there, isn't it? It's getting back there a little bit. 43 years ago. That's hard yeah. to believe, isn't it? It is. Crazy. Yeah, Jimbo, it really is. It just seems like yesterday to me. What were you doing <laughs> in 1981, Jimbo? I was trying to learn how to rope and working in the oil field welding. Same old stuff. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. always done. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, Kenyon, we appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate Guys, you giving thank our, your picks on the national me. finals. It's been a blast. Well, it's been our pleasure. And like I say, keep up the good work promoting that steer roping. We're going to keep going with steer roping headquarters. And we're going to keep everybody informed, especially during the finals. And I'll definitely be in touch with you guys. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, be sure and check them out on their steer roping updates page. They also got a YouTube page. What's it called? Do you have a YouTube page? Yeah, we did. Um, we got a YouTube page um, set up, okay. and you've kind of caught me on the spot because I don't remember uh, what it's called right offhand. Gotcha. Um, we've been a little bit behind the curve as far as getting some of that stuff set up. It's been kind of a pilot year where we've primarily been on Facebook. You can find us at PRCA Steer Roping Updates. And so we're providing video content to that Facebook page with the show called Steer Roping Headquarters. You can also find us under Kenyon Burns One on Instagram. And then you can go to YouTube and just, you know, Google PRCA Steer Roping Updates, my name, or Steer Roping Headquarters. Yep. Everybody check out Kenyon stuff. You bet. Give them a it's follow. Good, it's good stuff. Look, look us up. Stop, start liking it. Watch it. Share it. Subscribe to it. Anything you can do. Spread the word. Spread the word. <laughs> yeah. Steer roping is the word. That's right. Steer roping. Steer roping's the main deal for us. Single steer roping is about to reach height that no one ever thought was possible. It already has. It surpassed any expectations I ever had for it by this, by 2024, no doubt about it. It's better than I ever you know, thought it could be. You know, just right quick, go to Eastern Oklahoma, and there are so many different little associations of jackpot steer ropings and this and that. I mean, y'all have them like everybody else has team roping down here. 
Well, we're the steer roping capital of the world up here, Kenyon. I, I, I have to admit that. Yes. <laughs> Being from Lee County, gosh, it's tough. But I yes, I, I have to admit it. I agree. I know that Lee County is a famous county too for oh, yeah. for, for uh, all kind of ropers and cowboys. No doubt about it's it. Cowboy country. It used to be the home of the most world yeah. ch- world champions or something, wasn't it? Something like that, Kenyon. Um, Lovington, the home of yeah, more world champions about more anywhere world at one time. Champions. Yeah, something about more world. Yeah, at one time, I don't think it is now. Stephenville is now. But obviously. at one at one time, there are more world champions come out of Lee County than anywhere else in the on the map. That Jake McClure could really rope. My grandpa knew him, roped against him, calf roping, and he told me one time that he could really, really rope. Yeah, evidently he was pretty handy with that lariat. Yeah, he used he, he always wore a tie, and uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. Used, used a pretty small Both loop. Tie on. Pretty small loop, but Jim said he could really, really rope. When you get up in that legacy, you're going to have to break them ties back out, Kenyon. Yeah. You know what? I am not afraid to do that, Cody <laughs> Garnett, and I just, by golly, might do it. You better I pick might it to crack yourself. It out so of Odessa your next year. Go old school on Kenyon. That'd look <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah, I will probably have to have that thing pinned down pretty low. You know, like pinned to the very bottom of my shirt. Yeah. Boy, I hate to get it in a hooey. Uh huh. Boy, I sure hate to get it caught on a saddle horn and get drug around again. <laughs> <laughs> that's the main thing oh, shoot. i'm gonna <laughs> we're gonna cut yep. that story out and put starting it to out. wonder how safe it is <laughs> you see sean williams he was wearing a tie the other day yeah yeah i told him i said that's old school sean yeah he had a hat on with a hat a brim like that long on it right three inch brim <laughs> oh that's awesome oh yeah that's awesome well kenny we appreciate you coming on today we can't wait to have you, you in person one of these days. and uh, Yeah, we'll do another one in person sometime. Everybody. Uh, hey, you can just bank on it if you'll allow me because I want to come down and, and sit down with you guys, and I want to see that museum like nobody's business. You know, Kenyon's famous in Pahuska, don't you, Jimbo? Everybody in Pahuska knows who Kenyon Burns is. Everybody. He's had that autographed picture and, on the wall. Bad Brad, all these oh, yeah. You know, yeah. he's – didn't know where he's going with that, but yeah, yeah, yeah he sure did. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of truth to that. Yep, <laughs> yep. it's still up there too. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's still hanging up there. You and Johnny Pollock still got oh, a that's awesome, picture in there. Man. Your bad company rodeo pictures. <laughs> oh, the bad company days, man. Gotta love those. Yeah, we'll have to talk about those a little more in detail when. Uh, when we get that's what we should do is just have a bad company day we should we should <laughs> okay i, I tell we'll you what it. that guy could almost go on the mount rushmore steer roping yes i'd love that mac Don't altizer could so almost go on that mount rushmore about. yeah we can't wait to have you back sometime kenyon that'd well, be a good one we got we'll have a lot of plenty to talk we have plenty to talk about for sure yeah yes we do Yes, we do. Yep. I tell you, you guys what. have a blessed afternoon, and thanks again for allowing me to to be on. We're gonna have some steer roping headquarters shows coming up bef- before we get to the finals to try to brief everyone on the individual ropers, what their strengths are, and then get to the finals and keep you as up to date as possible. Sounds good to me. You know, when you think about Bad Company Rodeo. They had about as much to do with uh, modern steer roping today as anybody, really. I mean, they kept but it going. They, they, they absolutely do. They had it Mike every rodeo. Yeah, he did. Oh, he had it all of them. He was bound and determined to turn it into a speed event. He took it to Florida. He took it to Georgia. He took it to every single rodeo he, we had. <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah, I know. He wanted it. He said, we're going to have steer trip. You know, I want to send out a big congratulations to him. Uh, they're inducting him in the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City this year. And That's right. Very well-deserved. That is exactly right, and that takes place in November, I believe. Yep. 
probably the weekend after the finals, I think. Some years it's been the same Very weekend. Well could be. Some years it's been the same weekend, but I believe it's different weekends this this year, which would be good. Yeah, very well could be. Yeah. Well, Kenyon, we're going to get off here, and uh, okay, we'll see you guys. See everybody next week. Be sure and get over here to the museum. Check it out. Get over to the Buck and Flamingo Turquoise Shop. Get you some good jewelry bought. That's what I need to do is get to the bucket. That was the, that's what I was trying to think of the other day up there in Cheyenne. I couldn't think of the name of the store. Yeah. It's the Bucking Flamingo. I just love it. Yeah. Yep, love everything right. about it. Well, we got some pretty rank flamingos around here. So. <laughs> Don't forget to go get you a Indian taco do. with the saucy calf either. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'd love to see a Frank Flamingo. <laughs> yeah. Well, get up here. I'll show you all about him. We got a whole herd of flamingos. So, yeah. Okay, man. That'd be great, and that's a deal. All right. All right. We'll see everybody Fellas, next week. Have a great afternoon. Thanks again. You Thanks, too, Kenyon. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right.